Hi there, welcome back to my channel. So I'm Jo and I am So Jojo Sewing and Crafts. However, today I am making a fruit cake. So this is a baking vlog. So for anybody that used to come to my fitness classes, I used to make one of these each Christmas and they were very, very popular. So I thought I would make this video for anybody else that wanted to try my fruit cake. I call it my famous fruit cake and I am going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to make it. So if you have in the past had my sheet with the recipe ingredients and method on it and you've never attempted it because you're not quite sure, then have a go now. And if you haven't got that, I'm gonna put all of the information on here for you. So, and it'll be in the description as well, so you'll have that too. Um, don't really want to edit this video, so there might be a few ums and ahs and whatnots and stuff like that. So it, I'm trying to get this one out as quick as possible because uh, I've not been able to do any vlogging because I've got a really poorly aunt and I really wanted to do Vlogmas and that hasn't happened. So I thought, you know what, I've got to do my cake. I will film that and then it does give you a little go at, uh, well, a little sort of idea of how to make this cake. Uh, I can't cook. Anybody that knows me knows that I can't cook. I can even burn boiled, well, hard boiled eggs. I can cook a boiled egg. That's easy. You've just got to stay there. But I even I can burn hard boiled eggs and they explode. Mm. So anyway, let's see how we get on, OK? And uh, I'm going to do some sort of mm, editing on this as such, as in I'm going to pause it and then I'm going to show you everything you need, OK? All right, so I've got most of my ingredients sorted. I've got eight ounces of demerara sugar. I don't know what that is, you'll have to work it out, Google it. I've got 12 ounces of self-raising flour, three eggs, medium and fine. I've got 500 grams, so we'll go from one thing to another, but I'll, I'll put it all in the description. I've got a tub of glacé cherries, and they are in, already in halves, so that's a bit of a bonus. I've got some stalk here, that's my preferred choice. Now, this video nearly didn't happen because I didn't have any of this, and my husband's just gone out and got it. So I'm just gonna weigh out eight ounces of this margarine. It makes a big cake. I have got a nice, large, round tin here. My face isn't going to be much in this. It's not about my face, it's about the cake. So this is not Bake Off. And my husband didn't want to be my cameraman, so you know, whatever. Right, so I've got my eight ounces there. I can get rid of my scales now. And now I have got my tin. And what I do is, if you can, some liners, pound shop, brilliant. And I'm just going to put a little bit of butter around just to hold my cake liner in place. That so just holds it down the bottom there. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. It's there ready to go. Now be warned, I've got a pizza on order, so I may just have to disappear at some point. But let me put it back up on me for a moment. Right, so now what I've got is this dried fruit. I am here. Oh, got this dried fruit and I'm going to just empty that into this saucepan. You don't need a mixing bowl. Saucepan is best because you need to boil the fruit. I'm going to put some water, some cold water over this fruit and then you'll see what happens next. Let's just pause that a sec. I've got some well dodgy camera work going on here. So fruit in the saucepan just covered with water. I'm going to put that onto the hob and then bring it to a simmer and that makes the fruit all nice and plump and juicy. Let's just take that over. All right, let's put this on. Get this on. Now I want this to go nice and quick and you just need a wooden spoon as well and then it will get going. 
I'm not going to film all of that because that would be really boring. I'll show you when it gets to the point where we need to take it off, okay? So my fruit has been, I always start with so. My fruit has been simmering for a bit now and it's starting to get nice and plump and juicy. So whilst that is, and there it is again, so while I'm doing that, I get all my other bits and pieces sorted normally. However, I've got it all organised for you to make this a little bit easier for me. Right, let's pour it really, and that's enough. I'm going to go and strain that out now, and then I'll bring it back to the hob. I've uh, strained my fruit. Now I'm just going to put it back into my saucepan and I make the cake in there. While the hob is warm still, I pop in all my butter or margarine in this case. If you are going to use butter, use an unsalted butter. And I just let that, it's not the best side for me. Hold on a sec, let's swap sides. There we go. And um, <clears throat> I've been making this cake for a long time and I remember making it with my mum and my gran when I was little. And every time I make it, the smell of it just reminds me of being a little girl helping my mum or my gran make it. Once my gran left the sugar out of it and it seemed to be all right, so, because it does have a lot of sugar in it. Now I'm going to put that in, stick that in, that's demerara sugar, <coughs> excuse me, and we just let everything melt in there. I'm going to just keep this in real time for the moment. Sorry, it's not the best, the best shot, but it is what it is. So once I've done that and it's nice and melted, there might be a couple of little lumps in it, that's fine, because I'm just going to start rolling my cherries in some flour. Let's go and do that. Do excuse the light, it's not fabulous in here because it would appear that some of our lights are out at the moment. That might be a nice little job for my husband over the Christmas break. All right, so we've got 12 ounces of flour. We're working at what that is in whatever other measurements you like. So I just put a bit of that on the plate. I find this old, this children's plate is really good because it's got a nice high side on it. Get your cherries out. It's sticky but it's easiest to do this with your hands and just roll them about cover them with flour if you need a little bit extra do that and this will help stop the cherries sinking to the bottom of the cake and that's why uh, the fruit is <coughs> simmered as well so the fruit should be evenly distributed. Although it is a very full fruit cake, you should have through, fruit throughout of it. I've never had a problem with it. Right, so that is pretty good. Just sort of hands out. Oh, if only I was a TV chef with a crew sorting everything out for me, that would be fantastic, but that's never gonna happen. So let's not worry about that. Right, I'm gonna put my flour into my mixture. If I bring that over to here, Move my, oh, I've got a little island on wheels. Right, that will that will do. That will do. Let's see if I can get a bit of a bit of a butter angle. Right. Popping my flour in. Still haven't put my eggs in at this point. Mixing it all in. Again, I'm just keeping this all real time. Sorry, there's no overhead camera. This is basic, basic filming at its best. So mix the flour in. And it's starting to get quite heavy, this mixture now, as in 
the weight of the pan and the mix. So you may need a bit of a hand when it comes to taking the mixture out unless you sort of spoon it out into your preferred dish. Right, so I've mixed that all in nicely. What I'm going to do is put the eggs in, just so I don't have a, a mess up. I'll put them into a separate jug so I don't get any shells so nobody has a crunchy bit of cake when they shouldn't. Now you could whisk this up if you wanted to. I don't bother doing that. I just bung it straight in and just get in there, give it a really good mix up. Looks a little bit gooey and yucky and that, but it starts coming together and looking a little bit more like a cake mixture. So that's in. I'm happy with that, but that's mixed in well. And then I'm going to put these cherries in and I'm going to kind of fold them into the mixture. And just take it round nice and steady. Now you sort of think, oh, right, what's the point of putting the flour on? Don't know, really, when you mix it all in with the gooey stuff, but it does seem to work, so I'm not going to knock it. I shan't change the formula, and I'm not going to bother to try it differently. That is the cake mixture ready, and I'm now going to put it into my tin. So this is where it's a little bit heavy. And if I come around the other side, no, I'm not going to come around the other side. You just have to look at the bottom of the pan for the minute. Right, let me bring it around that way. So quite heavy, as I say. Whew, it smells gorgeous. I don't think I've missed anything. I think everything is everything that needs to be in there is in there. So I've preheated my oven. It's a, an electric fan-assisted oven and at the moment it's on 140 degrees now because i'm having this round cake it will take quite a while to cook um or bake through whatever you want to say and um yeah so you need you will need to keep checking it if you do it in a sort of like a two pound loaf tin then it's going to take less time because it's got to get all the way through to this middle section to cook and because of the fruit in it, it always makes me laugh on the Bake Off when they're, they're going to do a fruit cake. It's like, well, my fruit cake takes forever to cook. I'd never be able to get it done in the time. So that is it and it is ready to go into the oven. I'm not going to show you that. I'm putting it in the oven, middle shelf, okay? So I've put my cake in the oven on the middle shelf, as I just said, and I'm going to set a timer for about an hour. It won't be ready in that time, but it definitely won't be overcooked or, under, you know, you're with me. I'm setting it for an hour, so I know that when I go and look at it, I know it's been in for an hour. And then what I tend to do is go sort of every 15, 20 minutes and keep an eye on it. I'll know, it, you need to stick a knife in the centre, and when we get to that part, I will show you that, okay? By the way, the pizza came just as I was putting the fruit on to simmer. It was delicious. I ate far too much. I've got that for lunch tomorrow as well. Happy days. And uh, I'm really feeling quite stuffed at the moment. Right, I'm going to get my washing up done. And then I'll show you when the cake has had an hour in the oven. The cake's been in the oven for an hour now. I'm just going to check it. And what I'm going to do is get a sharp knife so I can check to see how much it's cooked inside. So I've got this little steak knife. Have a little look and see how it's looking. So it looks really good. These cracks are quite handy for sticking it. Now, this is completely raw inside at the moment. So it looks quite nice and cooked on the outside, but it's absolutely raw on the inside. So that needs to go back in, like I said. This cake does take quite some time to bake. So I'm going to put that on timer for another half an hour. I can absolutely forget about it for then. 
and then um, I will come back to it. Okay then, the cake had that extra half hour in the oven. I've checked it already. I was just editing this vlog that's a no edit vlog and it appears that it is now cooked. So there is a little bit of moisture on it and that's what you would expect because this tin is extremely hot. So I've just got it on my cooling tray at the moment. I'm just letting it cool down a little bit. I'm going to undo the, the tin because it's a little release, but it's all very hot still. I've checked in a couple of places. There's a little bit of resistance when I press the knife into the cake and that tells me that the cake is cooked. There's no point pressing it like this because it is so jam packed full of fruit. It doesn't go, it's not like a, a normal sponge where it would be a little bit springy. So I am going to just release this, get my oven gloves on and then put it on the cooling rack so it can finish off cooling. This cake takes ages to cool down properly, like hours. Sometimes I've left it in the microwave overnight to cool down so that my caps do not get hold of it. And also it just keeps it away from anything else flying in the air at all. So that is very hot. I'm going to leave it on there for just a little bit longer. And then when it's not quite so hot, I will pop it onto that proper cooling rack. You can see down the side there. That it is it's nicely baked it's not all mushy there all right so it's the following day and i am just about to cut into the cake i left it overnight to cool down time is quarter past 12 in the afternoon so let's have a little look and see how it's come out i'm just going to adjust the camera so you can see so i haven't cut it at all Ooh, excitement Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. there it is in all its glory yummy yum yum all right, so a couple of slices, that one for me and another one for me and one for myself and one for my husband. I'm really pleased with that. And how does it taste? Mmm, mm, absolutely. Mmm, 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 and you can't have any. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely delicious. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've still got cake all around my mouth. Uh, like and subscribe. Have a great Christmas and keep safe. And hope to see you all in the new year. Look out, see if there's any more videos. Hit the notification bell and you will be notified when any videos of mine go up. Thanks ever so much. Have a great one. I'm going back to the gate. <laughs>